Today on Houston Life, it's Wine Club Wednesday poured by HEB. Grab your glass because today we're po toasting National Pinot Noir Day. Plus, looking for a new job? How about hitting the water and earning a higher paycheck? We head out to Laporte for a lesson in marine navigation. And in today's viewer talker, from wait staff to hairstylists, we're talking when do you and don't tip and how much? All that more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life halfway through the week. Today is Wednesday, August 18th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. Hi, Derek, and I'm Courtney Sabala. We do want to let you know that we are awaiting a special report from the White House. President Joe Biden is going to address the nation about the latest on the fight against COVID, including the availability for booster shot, and that news conference is scheduled for 3.30. And in the meantime, we are keeping an eye on the weather. Let's bring in KPRC2's chief meteorologist, Frank Billingsley, who has a look at our forecast and what we can expect for the rest of the afternoon. Frank, it has been rocking and rolling out there. As promised, and it's going to continue as we go through about 6 7 o'clock. So make sure you keep any umbrellas you have really handy because it's a mess out there. Here's what the overall picture looks like. I want to focus on a couple of uh, issues around College Station. 42 mile an hour winds being reported up to the north out of Huntsville. See that yellow box? That's a severe thunderstorm morning until 345. Three quarter size inch hail, 60 mile an hour winds. And this storm is racing off toward uh, Houston County at about 30 miles an hour northeast at 30 so it's a fast mover a lot of lightning in that red box just this area 900 800 56 strikes now in just the last 15 minutes, just in that storm that we're watching. So be careful up there. This storm continues to move off to the north here. This is three hours of radar. We had some heavy rain right in this area here, just to the northeast of downtown earlier on the order of two and a half inches, and it's raining again. So some aerial flood advisories may be needed for this area here, just to the northeast of downtown. You can see as I widen this out, there's more showers that want to pull in here. So as these exit, that's the next round. That's why I say we'll be with this really all afternoon. By the way, Grace, a hurricane, 75 mile an hour winds continuing to move right toward the Mexican Peninsula. It's expected to go to 85 mile an hour winds and still be a hurricane as it heads toward south of Tampico on Friday and into Saturday. So I'll have a tropical update, keep you updated on the radar all ahead in about 30 minutes. All right, Frank, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, keeping you busy. That full forecast coming up. All right, shifting gears now. On a rainy day, do you ever order in, Courtney? Uh, yes, I outsource a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love that term, outsourcing. Well, before Uber Eats and all of these apps that you could use to, to order, it was kind of difficult for a lot of restaurants to sure. connect with customers, right? And I feel like during the pandemic as well, we saw so many different restaurants struggling. So today we're chatting about tipping habits. You know when you used to go get takeout at a restaurant and you would sign the receipt and there would be a place to tip, what would you do? Well, here's the th I'm going to say, bef prior to COVID, I would freak out in that situation. What do I do? I it was almost sort of a, a game time decision. And honestly, I based it on the interaction with the person taking my order. So did I need help? Were they extra fun? You know, because I, I know they're just packing it up and, and letting me go out the door. And it's part of the receipt already. But I just, I felt pressure. Now, especially too, when they flip the iPad around, you could fill out the rest, which ha which basically is saying no receipt, no tip or tip, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I always over tip, right? Because I don't want to be that guy who doesn't tip enough. But also, since the pandemic, I feel like now, you know, we're 20% used to be the rule of thumb. I feel like 40% now. These restaurant workers, they're they understaffed. They're overworked. They need it. And, you know, still in so many states, restaurant workers are earning like $2 yes. per hour, right? Yes. It depends on state by state, the laws vary, right? But they should all be making more money, in my opinion, right? So we do have an article. This is from GoBankingRates.com. Apparently, they did a study about this. Do you need to tip on takeout orders or not? So before the pandemic, tipping on takeout orders wasn't always standard, uh, maybe used for large orders or something, as you said, if they were going above and beyond. But now experts suggest, these experts, right, to tip as much as possible, uh, tipping to the point of pain, 
they say, because restaurants have been hit so Struggling. hard, yeah. they need our support. So I think it's a nice little reminder that the person taking your order, and certainly the people we don't see, the people working in the kitchen who are perhaps working the hardest, and those drivers who are out in weather like today's weather. Making sure we get the food that we want, right? Yeah. I would definitely do it. And I, I, I agree with you on over tipping, especially in this situation. Um, also hairstylists, I mean, there are so many other components here. The people that wash your hair or what, I mean, there's always a tipping availability, a tipping moment availability. Yeah, people who work in the service industry, I think we cannot uh, recognize them enough. So a nice little reminder to get out there, order some takeout, and, uh, you know, tip your drivers well. Tip your drivers well, your bartenders too. It is Wine Club Wednesday. Oh, it is Wine Club Wednesday. I is know. it here or does it feel like it's been forever? I guess it's only been a week since our last one. <laughs> Well, listen, this brings us to our question of the day. We asked, when shouldn't you tip? We already have some really great responses coming in, and we're going to start with our first one. Okay. And this is Chuck. And Chuck writes in saying, you should always tip, even fast food, even oh. if the service is horrendous. I'm still tipping. Reason being, the next person will reap your rewards. Always pay it forward. You know, fast food, that is a good it reminder. It is a really good reminder. Eric writes in, when the employer pays, a living wage. Oh, that's that's a good point. There's a lot of debate about employers not paying their staff enough. That's very good. Debbie writes in too. Listen, when visiting another country where it could be considered an insult, otherwise I always tip at least 15%, including when I pick up food to go. It's more work to pack it up carefully to keep those items appropriately hot, cold, and crisp, etc., than it is to serve a plate straight from the kitchen. These are all really great points. Yeah, and it is true that when you travel sometimes, the staff there are so not accustomed to receiving tips that they don't quite know what to do with it. I know. Good stuff. Yeah. Join our conversation there on the Facebook page. Still to come, we are getting our wine glasses ready for a virtual tasting in honor of National Pinot Noir Day. Plus, we will get to know wine club members Mark and Linda, who have been watching our show since back in the mall days. You'll see them shortly when Houston Life returns in just two minutes. Cue the music. You know what that means. It is Wednesday, but not any old Wednesday because this is Wine Club Wednesday poured by H-E-B. Music to our ears. Hard to say? believe it's been a full seven days since we <laughs> last did this. And now that it's 3, 10 p.m., it seems like a good time yes. to sip. Today we're sipping Pinot Noir. Is that correct? That is right. A National Pinot Noir Day. H-E-B wine specialist Ryan Robinson, who is highlighting two different varietals here of Pinot Noir in honor of National Pinot Noir Day. And this is so much fun. It's great to see you. Hi, so good to see you guys again. Thank you for having me back. I wish we could be in the studio, but that's okay. We still have phenomenal wines to drink. Okay, so you got to break this down, Ryan. In our Wine Club uh, Wednesday poured by HEB, these are both Pinot Noirs in front of us. I would just assume that this first one is a rosé, but I'm wrong. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for pointing that out. So yes, this is a rosé of Pinot Noir. It's from Westmount uh, Winery out of Willamette Valley, Oregon. So I want you to think about, picture yourself biting into a red grape. The red is only the skin. The inside is, the flesh is, is white. So it's that um, when a winemaker is making wine, they can decide how long they want to leave that skin in contact with the juice. Well, you know, these, these uh, rosés, the skin is just on there for a little while. So you can make a rosé out of any red wine. Um, even Cabernet, um, a lot of them are made from Grenache grapes. Um, but uh, Pinot Noirs make really beautiful uh, rosés. You think about all those great flavors you get off of a Pinot Noir wine, you know, the strawberry, the earthy, the spicy, and then you just lighten that up a little bit and you get a rosé from Pinot Noir. Listen, I am a rosé fan and all of a sudden I love a Pinot Noir rosé. This is so lovely and the price point is really nice as well, Ryan. It's under $20. Oh, yeah, it's a, a great price point on the shelf, especially for, um, I really wanted to feature for National Pinot Noir Day, um, one of my favorite places of all time, uh, Willamette Valley, Oregon. They make some of the best Pinot Noirs in the entire world. So to get a really beautiful, actually two, these are both under 20. So to get two beautiful 
where Ramit Valley Pinot Noirs for under $20 a bottle is an absolute steal. And in the notes I'm reading uh, that this has aromas of guava, strawberry, and watermelon, I would not describe this as a sweet not at all. flavor at all. Mm -hmm. No, because it has that nice, bright acidity, and like, um, if you think of the earthiness off of a, a red Pinot Noir, and then you make it into a lighter, softer one, it turns into these like crispy, crunchy kind of minerality notes to it that um, balance out those sweet fruit and almost tropical fruit kind of notes. I think it's lovely. I think this is a home run. I love a good rosé. Whenever I order one, too, I always make sure. Not sweet, right? Not sweet. I want to dry. This is the exact blend that I was looking for. Okay, well, let's hope it's exactly what Mark and Linda, our wine club members, were looking for as well. I think their video connection, there it is. There they are. It's great to see you both. Look at this. 55 years of marriage. Mark and Linda met in college outside New York City back in 1966. I think Mark and Linda are having trouble hearing us at this point, so we're going to work on their shot. And while they do that, Ryan, we're going to bring you back in. Let's move on to this second wine. This, in darker color, is what most <laughs> of us uh, would immediately recognize as a Pinot Noir. Cheers. Yes, absolutely. This is Soder, uh, their Planet Oregon Pinot Noir. You guys, this was a winner for the Rodeo Uncorked competition. Um, it is a gorgeous Willamette Valley Oregon Pinot Noir. Um, you know, the, the wines that come out of Willamette Valley really rival some of the best Pinot Noirs in the entire world. And I think this is a great example of that. It's just a classic Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. Mm, what do you think, Courtney? I love this. I mean, again, this is a very light but fit flavorful um, wine. I think it's great for summer. What would you pair this with? Oh, uh, man, you could do... So that's the great thing about Pinot Noir. I'm really glad you asked, Courtney. So Pinot Noir is such a versatile grape. It's actually your typical grape that you pair with a Thanksgiving meal. Because if you think about Thanksgiving, you've got everything. You've got you know, light meats, dark meats, you have every different side dish in the world. So, I mean, really the possibilities are kind of endless with the Pinot Noir. I mean, my perfect pairing for this one would probably be like, um, like a, a pork loin with a, a bit of a, a cranberry sauce reduction or something along those lines mm. would work really great. Listen, Ryan, you're going to have to meet uh, Mark and Linda, two of our wine club members, perhaps on another uh, virtual yes. wine tasting here on Houston Light. But fun fact, even though we had some technical problems and we couldn't hear them, their cat's name is Pino. How cool <laughs> is that? A rescue from Hurricane Ike. They're big fans of Houston Life. They love our Karen and hate mail stories. And uh, they even had their own wine club back at Lamar University. So hello from Mark and Linda. Okay. And Ryan, you'll get to meet them another time. I'll take a, a rain check on a rainy day and we'll meet him next time. Oh, exactly. <laughs> rain check on this rainy wine club Wednesday. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. That was delicious. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. I can't decide on which one, so I'm going to cheers both. Oh, okay. Sounds <laughs> sounds good to me. If you would like to join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEB, just visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, if you'd like to register. You'll also have access to exclusive giveaways. You'll even have a chance to be part of those virtual tastings. And we're going to get back with uh, Mark and Linda again another time to make sure that Absolutely, we can introduce we them correctly. And as a reminder, you can find today's featured wines at your local HEB. Go ahead and snag them up. They're delicious. Cheers to Pinot Noir Day. And cheers to you. You too, my friend. Okay, still to come, Mariners for a day. Derek and I find out what it's like to navigate the Houston Ship Channel in a state-of-the-art simulator. Will we sail our boat ashore? Uh-oh, I hope not. But first, <laughs> we want to take a live look from our storm tracker out on the roads in downtown Houston. After the break, Frank will have your full forecast and how the rain could affect your afternoon commute. Houston Life will be right back. Well, welcome back. Uh, you know, we do want to remind you that we are awaiting a news conference from the White House. President Joe Biden is expected to address the nation about COVID and also the booster shots that's coming up at 3.30. Yeah, we'll take that when it happens. And if you're looking for a new and better paying job, how about 
hitting the water, okay. so to speak. This sounds really good to me. Courtney and I visited the San Jacinto College Maritime Training Center to get a taste of what it's like to navigate the Houston Ship Channel and learn more about a career field where jobs are in high demand. There's just a huge shortage of mariners right now, and it's only we, we're predicting it to only get worse in the next few years. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities out there right now. At San Jacinto College Maritime in Laporte, instructors like Amy Arrowwood are training students in a wide range of maritime skills, from the basics of being an entry-level deckhand to maneuvering the largest ships in the world. To earn your associate's degree here, it's two years from start to finish. In the associate's degree program, our students graduate with their degree and as well as 14 different Coast Guard certificates, but we also offer 75 classes here that anybody could come and take outside of the associate degree. And along with those new skills, a nice paycheck. So you could be in the 70 to $80,000 range within a year, and then um, three to five years after that, when you start training to drive the vessels, definitely in the six-figure range. Training includes state-of-the-art simulators, where students face all kinds of scenarios. And yes, I think we've got an opportunity for you guys to do that here today. Are you ready? I'm born ready. <laughs> it's pretty much like dri driving a car. OK. Um, so we, if we, we were going to stay in the center until we do have some traffic, just pass port to port. OK. So what is that? I don't know. Port side <laughs> is left. Oh, so right. you're going to leave the other ship if they're outbound. Oh. They're going to be on your left side. So just like a, just like how you drive your car. So they pass. Yes, yep. yes, 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 yes. Yep. OK. All right, we're going to tell them to put us underway. OK. All right, we're moving. Oh OK. And I see our speed up there is okay, so seven miles. So cool. Uh, seven, 10 knots. We're already going 10 knots. Okay. You see that ship coming at us? I do. Yes. Okay. It needs to stay on my left. Correct. Correct. I don't know what the name of it is, but I know it is left. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. That's a shrimp boat. He Don't follow him. We're going to go a little bit to port. Let's aim for the, let's go under the bridge here, oh, Courtney. Okay. Perfect. We've got some people out going day, okay. day sailing. Yep. There you go. This I is perfect. How beautiful the bridge looks today. The Fred Hartman Bridge. Looks amazing. Then it was my turn. You got this. <laughs> you got it. Courtney and I are going to be your bridge team, so we're going to help you help keep a lookout for dangerous scenarios. Oh, OK. Hold on. I'm like, hold on. This wheel is very sensitive. <laughs> so, so if you all get a little seasick, I'm just getting used to the, the feeling of it. For a second, I thought we were going to capsize. Uh oh, is the weather changing? Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh. Yeah, the rain came out of nowhere. Oh, wow, it looks like we're getting a bit of fog as well. There's the same traffic, the shrimp boat, your ship over there, your tow boat. Okay. There's our sailboat. Now, I can tell that the bow is bouncing a bit because we're getting some waves. Is the strategy here just to sort of stay the course? Yeah, we want to stay in the middle of the ship channel, still safe, leave them at a safe distance, leave that shrimp boat, stay in the channel, just aim for under the bridge. Okay, aim for under the bridge and hope for the best. <laughs> oh, oh, easy. Okay, now I've never got sick in the okay. simulator before, but this Hold might on. be a first. Okay. It's a bit too sensitive. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I'm new here. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. We need help. Okay, what is happening? It is getting a little nautical. That's what we like to call it. This is not a normal situation, but I guess this is part of the point that you <laughs> want to prepare students for any scenario. Um, this is a little extreme. I don't think we'd see these swells in the Houston Ship Channel. Something tells me I should stick to my day job. You did a great job. However, I'm going to say, Courtney, you're going to be our captain, and Derek, you're going to be our mate. Does that mean I get to pour the drinks? <laughs> I and feel like it's a win-win. It's a nautical joke. It's a nautical joke. And so we have Courtney. We have <gasps> this for you oh, for your that's visit. Official. You're officially Captain Courtney. Captain Courtney, I love the sound of that. <laughs> I do too. I mean, it was so fun, right? It was so fun, and it's more difficult than it looks. I was glad that they they threw some curveballs at us. A lot of students, they said, too, they're convinced that the floor and the ceiling are moving because the simulator is that realistic, but the room doesn't move at all. It I know. We felt like it. it well, I felt it during your reign, your helm at the uh, steering wheel, whatever you want to call it. But here, I do have a little bit of an insight for you, though, because I think we kind of 
we need to let you in on a little secret. Oh, really? Because I arrived slightly earlier to the maritime training, and this is what happened. Okay. Okay, Amy, I'm ready for my lesson. How are you? Good. Good morning, Courtney. How are you? So I'm going to give you a couple of tricks of the trade, and um, you're going to be Captain Courtney in no time. I can't wait. And by the way, we're doing this a little ahead of time. This is a bit of a contest for Derek because I'm getting a little bit extra lesson before he actually gets here because I want to win. Okay. <laughs> and, and I want you to win. So okay. we're going to do this together. This is going to be awesome. Okay. So I'm assuming this is where I need to stand. Yes. Come on over here. Okay. Put your hands on the wheel. See, you're already there. I'm already feeling now, it. Now, here's the secret. Okay. The biggest secret, small movements. So just go ahead and give it a little port rudder. There you go. A little uh, starboard. Okay. And then right up there, we're going to keep an eye on your rudder angle indicator and your rate of turn. So like I said, small movements. Um, so we're, we're just in the Houston ship channel, so we don't need a lot of rudder. Okay, and so both of those, for the rudder angle and the rate of turn, I want to keep them basically where they are now on the on the meter, right? On yeah, the dial? close to zero. If, you're, if they're zero, you're going to be going straight. Okay. So it looks picture perfect today uh, on the ship channel. Calm water, but can we maybe give Derek a not so great weather day to drive his ship? Oh, I love this idea. I think, how about, how do you feel about six footers? Maybe a little fog, yes. rain. Yes. Maybe evening, kind of getting nighttime darkness. I love it all. Sorry, Derek, I just needed a little bit more practice ahead of time before you got here to master the ship. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> and master it, you did. You know, I, this is great. I just figured you were a natural and you, <laughs> you picked it right up. It is true, those slight movements, I was turning that wheel way, <laughs> way too much. I just figured you picked it right up. No, and let me tell you, when you're talking about the floor actually moving, when I was in there in that simulator alone before you, and that's one of the things I wanted to say when you got there, but I had to be tight-lipped because it lit I felt the whole thing moving. And it was so crazy because it's just the screens on the simulator. You feel your legs moving. You feel like the whole ground is moving but it was such a great experience. It was really, really cool. And the great thing is they do this every single day, yeah. training students for careers out on the water. That's right. By the way, a reminder that the associate's degree program in maritime transportation takes two years to complete, and the fall semester begins August 23rd. That's on Monday. Yeah, and when uh, when she told us how much these people make, it's pretty staggering. Yes. You make a lot of money. Absolutely. Visit the Scene on Houston Lights section of our website for more information. All right, let's check back in with KPRC2 Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley, who hey. has been tracking these storms all day. How's it looking, Frank? You know, really heavy rain continues on the east side, so I want to start there, Harris County Flood Control District. We monitor all of these websites and these rainfall numbers, and you can see an inch at Hunting Bayou, almost that, Hunting Bayou at Loop 610, 1.12 down at Greens Bayou, and then at Greens Bayou and Lay Road, three inches of rain. Greens Bayou and Tidwell Road, almost three inches of rain. This is the area I'm talking about right here, just to the northeast of town. You had heavy rain already, and now you're seeing more move through there. So be careful if you're in that part of town for any flooded roads. Up to the north in the Huntsville area, this storm has had a lot of lightning and three-quarter inch size hail, 60 mile an hour wind. Still a warning on this until 345 as it moves toward the Crockett area. Down to the south, these showers are going to continue to move into Houston. Behind that, I'm not seeing much, but we've got to get through these as they continue to move to the north. So it looks like things will wind down as we get to 6 30, 7 o'clock, but we're back in it as we go into tomorrow. So we'll talk about that coming up at 4. In the meantime, 70% chance at 4 o'clock, 50% for uh, 5, and then 30 for 6 and 20 for 7. So things do wind down, but you'll notice we're back to 40 on Thursday, 10 on Friday, and then look at those numbers 96, 98, 100 degrees. We haven't had 100 all summer. We're about to get there, so get ready for that. We've been waiting for it, Frank. Thanks yep. so much for keeping an eye on the storms today. Yeah, you betcha. We'll in just a bit. All right, so earlier today we were asking about tipping. Do you tip when you take out? There's a debate happening online. We always hear on the side of tipping, right? And the question was, when should you not tip? Let's get to some more of your comments. Megan writes in, only if gratuity is already rolled in, though I've tipped on top mm -hmm. of that when the service goes above and beyond. Absolutely. Agreed. That's a good one. Christy writes in, tips equal to ensure proper service. So when proper service is given, then tips are in 
return given. You know, I agree, but even when I've had bad service, I, I always tip extra because I feel bad. I know. Especially when staff, when they share the tips. Kelly writes, I always tip unless someone is intentionally rude. This is just theoretical, though, because no one has ever been intentionally rude. If the service is bad, I assume it's just an off day. Most people are doing the best they can. You know, Kelly, I've never worked in food service. Brandon uh, has before. A lot of my Good. dear friends, mm -hmm. you have, right? And I know that some customers can just test your patience. I can only imagine how difficult that job is, which is why I try to always empathize and put myself in someone else's shoes. Right, and sometimes it's not the, the server's problem, right? Like maybe it's something else happening within the restaurant, and so the person actually dealing with you is not causing the delay or something like that. I feel like as long as they're communicating, hey, kitchen's backed up, we're having some problems, I know, I'm aware, all of that I think goes into consideration because that person's just really trying to do their job. Just trying to hold it together. Yeah. And, and especially these days when restaurants are so understaffed and the demand is there. Have you gone out recently? Oh, to a yes. And they're like, we couldn't find Sorry, enough we don't have people enough to workers. work the shift, so we're only seating five tables here. It's a tough time for restaurants. It certainly is. You know, I worked in the uh, pizza restaurant, and deep dish pizza in Chicago takes much longer than a regular one. Because it's time, not actually pizza. It's a pie, right? It's a pie. One time I forgot to put it in because I had all these other tables, and I knew it. It was about 45 minutes, and I still did. The people were kind of making eye contact at me, oh, no. and I walked up to them, and I said, it's my fault. I didn't put your ticket in. I'm bringing you over a pitcher of beer. I'm going to make this right. I mean, because I knew it was stuck in my apron and didn't do it with all the rest of my tables. Wow. So I feel like if you communicate it, you just admit the wrong, you can always make it right. Yeah, good for you for, for being honest about it. I'm sure those customers appreciated that. We once waited, my mom and I waited for a long, long time, and then the waitress, she was too embarrassed to tell us that she forgot to put in our order. So she said that she dropped it all coming out of the kitchen. Oh. And we're like, girlfriend, Ooh. we didn't hear a crash. No, there no, was no yeah, Opa moment. <laughs> Tough to work in food service. So, it really is. Uh, thanks for keeping us fed, Houston. And as we head to break, here's a look at what we have coming up on tomorrow's show, including Olympian Jordan Childs. That is so exciting. Do not go away. There is much more Houston life right after this.